you want to learn about Amanita muscaria, please go to mushroomvoice.com and get my book, Dosing Amanita muscaria and What to Expect. When I was still under the influence the following morning, I turned the video on because I wanted to capture the worst that I was feeling on camera and before I had gotten information from the facilitators about what actually happened. Up until this video, I have continued to say that Amanita muscaria works by moving you through multiple timelines, which I did, by putting you a reality overlay over the one that you are in so that you see other realities either multiple simultaneously or one large reality as an overlay onto the one that you're having in front of you. And that is the trip. Thought loops are you working your way through an issue. You go so fully into your experience as a human that you get to see that the reality you think you're living right now is an illusion and you get to see the other ways that you can be experiencing this same lifetime in an alternate dimension. And it shows you the way other people can be there experiencing the same thing with you and they are having a completely other reality. With Amanita, you will learn it wasn't even the reality that anyone else was experiencing around you or witnessing around you. I'm going to put pieces of the video of me at, in the very beginning of the come down in this video to sort of drive the point home in my own words while I was in it. Then I'm going to tell you what I learned right after making that video that changed everything and then what I've learned since in the three weeks after that and how profoundly my life has changed, not my internal life, which has changed, but the things that I wished and intended to change because it was summer solstice immediately started changing and this always happens. And I try to talk to you guys about the importance of the solstices and ceremony on the solstices. I'll keep talking about it. Maybe some of you will believe it and listen and get on that. <laughs> I sat in as a participant because I've never been able to do that because I, I use all of my doses here by myself. I've hurt myself by not having a sitter and I have been the facilitator. So I really wanted to be able to experience a high dose in safety, knowing that I wouldn't hurt myself. There were about 25 of us. It was in San Francisco. There were four facilitators. We were given a container. We were told to drink as much or as little as we felt called to drink. I wanted to go light because I had to work still in the coming days after that. I drank half the container because I feel like I know this medicine really well. And I feel like a half a container is enough for me to have an experience and that I would be fine. But as soon as that half sort of kicked in, the mushroom said, no, babe, we need to talk. Go on and drink the rest. And I was like, oh, but I will always trust the mushroom voice. So I did. The last thing that I remember is being with other people around me and we were tasting berries and I was getting in some thought loops and those thought loops involved one of the things that I'm really having a difficult time with one is imposter syndrome as I'm called to do more like write my dosing Amanita book the praise that it has been accepted with the fear that I wrote it with some of the things that I said in it talking about sentience of a lot of things on this earth some of the stuff that I'm okay saying on video when it goes into print, it winds up in places videos don't. And in audience, in front of audiences that a lot of videos wouldn't. And I put myself out there for an incredible amount of criticism because I didn't hold back in that book. And I've been afraid. I have a hard time making decisions about 
how things should be structured, when things should be released, changes that should be made in the community, people that want a piece of me, who am I going to give that to, decisions about where the money goes, how much to charge for things, what to give away for free, when to volunteer my time, who to volunteer that to. It's in the 90s out here, y'all. It's, it's evening and it's so hot. And almost immediately when the medicine kicked in, some of the last things that I remember that everyone else shared, were sharing the same memory and the same reality, was tasting fruit, because ibotenic acid is a flavor enhancer and it tasted phenomenal and I was laughing about it. And I was starting to lose touch with the common shared reality when I was sitting in a group talking with other people who were also coming up and starting to sort of come and go from the shared reality. And we were talking and one of my facilitators, David, I was having a hard time with someone else and they said, set boundaries. You can set boundaries. You can say no. Tell me no, you know. And I told him no. And I'm always wanting to help people around me. And he's like, not tonight. This is you. And that really seated my open, porous mind to start setting boundaries and saying no. All of a sudden, I woke up from my mat, people are up, people are down, people are doing their things, they're wandering and tripping. I don't know how long I had been down. I couldn't stand up. But I wanted to tell people that I can help them, but I have to be able to set some boundaries. In my mind, I got up and said that out loud, I will help you, but I have to set boundaries. Which, why would I do that? That's so egregious. And that was only the beginning of, of the shame inducing behavior. I said that out loud, I cannot help you. I have to set boundaries, yelled it out in the room. And then I just started walking around. The mushroom was saying, okay, if you have to be such a good person, you have to make sure you stay in line because that's what you were taught and don't offend people and try to help stop suffering. You're hurting yourself and you need to be able to put yourself first and say no. And someone walked up to me and asked a question and I said, I can't answer that right now. And then someone else came up to me and one of the facilitators took them away from me and said, she's having her own experience right now. I remember that. And I said, go away, I cannot help you. And I started walking around and in my mind, the mushroom was saying, we're gonna take you overboard to the other extreme, which Amanita will do because so many of us did not learn in our terrible twos and threes, the way most toddlers learn. And that is to push the boundaries and see how that feels. Because if you're always people pleasing, or you're always narcissistic and an asshole. There's an in-between, but until you've experienced all of it, you don't know where that middle is. And I think I was reparenting myself and trying to find that middle for myself. And this was the trip of going overboard. One of the facilitators said, how are you doing? And I said, fuck you, fuck you too, and fuck you. And they were like, ha good, you're doing good. One of the other facilitators said, hey, you need any help? I said, I don't need your help. I'm doing fine, fuck you. And then I just started walking around telling people your music sucks, but you love your music. You know who I said that to. You don't, but they do. And I was just telling people, I can't fix you. I, I'm not here for your pleasure. I am me, I have a body, I have a life. I've got to deal with me, which, okay, that's admirable, I get it. But somewhere in there, I laid down and I heard applause and everybody in the whole room. And I opened my eyes and sat up and the whole room was like, she gets it. And everybody just started clapping. And I'm like, the fuck is going on? Why? And then one of the facilitators said, while we did all use some of the mushroom, we were here for you. This was your experience. And this was what we wanted you to learn. And everybody's clapping and I'm like, why would everybody do that? And then I'm like, oh no, 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 no. This is not good. I do not want to be the center of attention like this. 
I control when I upload videos. I control when I'm the center of attention because I don't like to be, I don't want it. I deal with it in pieces when I feel prepared. This I did not want. I thought I was having my own experience. I thought everyone was having their own experience. I did not want that. And I laid down really quickly and I told the mushroom, I was like, don't know, no. How are we gonna fix this? If I just lay here quietly, people will leave me alone. And then I felt someone pull on my feet and they were like, you gotta help me. Like their whole story. And I looked at them, I said, I, I pulled my feet away. I was like, I can't help you. I am not your guru. I'm not your shaman. I'm not gonna help you. And then facilitator dragged them away. And I finally stood up and I said, okay, it's not gonna hurt me if I help you. Oh my God, it's not gonna hurt me if I help you. I've, I'm deeper than I think I am. I can help you. And I wanted to go around the room and tell everybody, but I couldn't walk. So I started crawling around the room going, I can help you. I will help you. I love you all. I can help you. I will help you. I love you all. And I went all the way around the room telling everybody that. Then I laid back down and then I tripped inside my head and the mushrooms were like, like they were sorting through files in my brain, like and threw shit out like and they pulled something out and then they put it, click, push play. And then I opened my eyes and they were like, but you realize just because you say the right thing doesn't mean you helped anybody. You can't help anybody. They've got to want to help themselves. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I can't help anybody. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to educate, but I'm not here to help anybody. I can't do that. Everybody's got to do it on their own. You've got to do it for themselves. So I yelled it out. I can't help you. You have to save yourself. And I'm like announcing this and I walk around the room yelling it to everybody. And then I'm like, see, I'm done. I'm done. Now, can we all go back to having our own trip? And it just got worse. Like I lay down and then I woke up again and I was crawling across the floor going, fuck all of you people. You all believe me and you came here and you took the mushroom cause you're gullible and you're stupid and you listened to me and I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm talking about. And you just did what I told you to do and you're stupid and this is stupid and I hate it all. And then I started crawling over, knocking everybody's buckets over, just knocking them over. And the whole time this is happening, I'm like, make it stop, make it stop, make it stop, make it stop, make me stop, make me stop. I don't want to be doing this. And I said out loud, where's the facilitator? Someone make me stop. Please make me stop. I don't want to be doing this. Please stop me. Please intervene. Please, please stop me. Please stop me. I don't want to be doing this. And then that's all I'm saying while I'm knocking people's buckets over is please stop me. Please stop me. I don't want to be doing this. And I make my way all the way around the room. I get up to the altar and I see the Amanitas and I just want to crawl into them. And then all of a sudden the facilitator's like, oh, you need to get back to your bed. So I go back to my bed. It just keeps going in these grandiose sort of if everybody will listen to me and I say the right thing, they'll leave me alone. If I say the right thing, they'll leave me alone. Everybody will just go have their own trip and they'll leave me the fuck alone. This is the thought loop. The whole trip was a loop. And this is what you'll find with this mushroom is you'll have one short loop maybe, right? And then you'll go on to other things. The higher the dose you take, the longer that loop can get. And I have another video about Amanita thought loops. And what they do is, and I, I tell you in it, you're working through something and what you're doing is you're slowly sorting it out and narrowing it down. And in this particular loop, which was hours long, I'm working out what it means to be Amanita Dreamer and where my boundaries are with the public, with myself, with my body, my thoughts, my mind, my time, my money, my empathy, my heart, all of it, because those boundaries are just getting tested constantly. This went on for hours of me figuring something out telling everybody because they're all waiting for me to tell them and I want everybody to leave me alone. 
And I feel like every time I open my eyes, people are looking at me and waiting. And some people are laying down looking at me. And I'm like, I really just want this to end. I want people to leave me alone. I want to have my own experience here. And finally, at some point, I was like, if I just go silent and I don't speak for the rest of the night, then everybody will just leave me the fuck alone. And that's what I did. And I heard people yelling my name. I heard people trying to talk to me. I heard facilitators saying she can't help you right now and taking them away. Like I heard this stuff going on and I'm just like, I'll lay here quietly till it's over. And finally, one of the facilitators came over and said, touched my feet and said, hey, are you okay? And then I heard, is that the end then? And I'm like, God damn it. There was a sign in the bathroom that was profound. If I just give him the sign that was in the bathroom, then he'll believe me that that's the answer. And then, then everybody will leave me alone. So I crawled into the bathroom, got that sign, which said something amazingly deep and profound. And I waited for him to come in. And when he came in, I gave it to him. And I went back to my pallet and I laid down. I woke up the next morning. That sign said something about putting the toilet seat down, by the way. <laughs> We're going to get into the real truth about what happened. Because none of that happened. But I didn't know that. And when I woke up, I was so ashamed. I was so hurt. I was so angry that the mushroom did that to me. That I made such a fool of myself. That I hijacked everybody's ceremony. This was what I said about it. And I don't know how it happened, but at some point in this mess, somebody triggered something in me and asked me to do something. I said, no, I can't. And then like, I lose time and then I'm back on my, on my sleeping pad in the corner. And for some reason I just said, I yelled, I can't help you all, or something. I don't know if that's the first thing that started it. I just started yelling it, like invading everyone else's space and journey. It's still very grandiose. It's still very rude. It's still very awful that I interrupted everything that everybody was experiencing. But at least it's easier to hear you're all so beautiful, but I was fucking screaming it. And the whole time this is happening, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And I get what they're trying to do. They're like, go very deep into your worst nightmare. Like, I get that. That's what they fucking did. Go headlong into your worst nightmare. But not just in my head. No, live it in real life. Like, steal 20 people's experiences that they paid good money for and live with that shit. And the shame is crippling. I've been taking Amanita four years and six months. And this is my first truly awful experience. And I feel like I hurt. I like hit and run. I hurt people and dipped out. And it's not that I don't want to face them. I will absolutely face them. It's just like right now the shame is crippling. I really want to learn what I have to learn from this so I don't ever have to do that again or feel this kind of shame. Bad trips don't always look like bad trips as I look like I was having fun and I was not. And the whole time it's happening, I'm begging the mushrooms to make it fucking stop. How do you process this much shame? And somehow turn out to be okay. Like, make that a good thing. How do you take the overwhelming shame and make it oh I get it now I'm so, I do love myself and it is okay that people give to me it is okay that I take up space I don't know how you get that from this I don't know how, the, the path from here to there because that's the lesson I'm supposed to learn I don't want that clearly it's being forced on me I think I take up just enough space that I'm okay with. It's hard to make 
YouTube videos. That's too much space, but I do it. I talk over people because I have a processing disorder. That's awful. That's too much space. I verbally process what I'm trying to say in conversation. So it's not succinct. I, I talk too long to say what I'm trying to say in conversation. So it looks like I'm trying to monopolize the conversation because I think I'm so important. And the, the opposite is true. But that's fucking autism. So I'm taking up space. And I'm ashamed of it. Maybe I, I know I'm supposed to not be. But also, it offends people. I mean, my whole life I've been punished for it. So clearly it offends people. I don't want to be okay with that. But whatever. This is, this is my process. This is the journey. And this is Amanita too. Okay. Thanks for listening. Later. I laid there in that bed where you just saw this video. I laid there for, I guess, two hours feeling so much incredible shame and just doing my best to cope with it. And then one of the facilitators said, hey, you coming back? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had to lead the integration sort of closing circle in about another hour, hour and a half. So I got up, I changed clothes and washed my face and I was so embarrassed. I did not want to face those people and go back there knowing I did all that. <laughs> and so I walk in and people are just crying. People are hugging each other. People are smiling. People are stretching. Everybody's just like, hey, 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 hey. Through apologies and a series of conversations, what I learned was I did not go around knocking buckets over. I was just walking and stomping in buckets, <laughs> just stomping in buckets. And one of the facilitators took me back and, and helped me lay down. They said at one point I said from where I was standing or sitting, I cannot help you. You have to help yourself. I told them I did that going all the way around the room. They were like, no, you didn't do that. I brought up a lot of the things I said and did that were awful and embarrassing. They were like, no, you never did that. I brought up some of the things the facilitators said to me. They were like, no, that never happened. We didn't, we didn't do those things. At one point they told me, I went around telling everybody they were beautiful. And one woman was having difficulty feeling ugly and saying she was ugly. And I said, say it, you're beautiful, say it, you're beautiful. And she said, I'm beautiful. And I said, oh my God. And then I, they told me I led everybody to dance and got people dancing and celebrating that she thought she was beautiful. I have no memory of that. Did find out later that many people did try to come up and talk to me and get me to give them advice, help them or save them. Individual people remember me saying things that I don't remember saying, things I do remember saying that I thought were egregious, that they said, oh no, this is how I heard it. And it morphed into something completely different for them. Some people had interactions with me that I remember having, but they said I said something and I don't remember saying it like that. I have recordings on my phone of nonsense that when I recorded it was profound of a conversation I was having with people. All in all, after we had the integration circle and everybody spoke, we pieced together. And I, I say in the beginning that when you use Amanita with other people, everyone's reality merges and it becomes a shared experience. It is very profound like that. And I learned that the things I heard other people say were taken out of context because they were what I needed to hear to interpret and incorporate into my trip and into my experience. Things that people said was annoying to me and bothering me, I found out they never said. All in all, we all were in the same room for the same experience. And what the facilitator saw was some people were down the whole night, other people were up and down, other people were up the whole night, interacting we were all tripping in our own way and we were all living this shared experience especially those of us that were up and walking and talking and interacting with each other 
in the exact same room, witnessing the exact same things, hearing the exact same things being said, and yet every one of us experienced a completely different reality of things being said and things that happen, because that's what Amanita does. <laughs> While I was experiencing what I'm telling you here, when I would close my eyes, I would fall through layers of earth and realities and wake up and open the door and walk out into the room again and have that reality that I would tell you. I woke up again or I got off my pallet again and this is what happened. When I would lay back down and close my eyes, I would fall again through realities or go up and then doors would open and I would walk into the earth, into that room and have more interaction but I was acutely aware that I was falling up and down vertically through realities. And I was fast forwarding and rewinding time. And one of the things that I tried to do was go back and undo going around, knocking everybody's buckets over, which I found out later, I was just stomping in buckets. That's all I was doing, they were empty. I was just stomping in buckets. I, I wasn't knocking them over and I wasn't crawling and I wasn't asking for help and to make it stop. And I swear to you, that's exactly what I did. I was saying those things, but it was all happening in my trip. This is how Amanita trips happen and why they are so different and why it freaks people out because they think they're not tripping. They think they're in reality, that they think they're normal and that what's happening is happening, but it's an overlay of their current reality. The thought loop was me trying to work out my boundaries and who I am. So what I've learned, I came out of that immediately, no longer afraid of not getting to everyone's comments, no longer feeling sad or wounded when people need help and I can't help them. I no longer feel apologetic about having to block people. I don't carry that pain with me. I, I felt this very strong sense of solidity and presence inside my skin and inside my body and inside my knowing of what I'm doing. And I watched so many other people unapologetically own their shit and just laugh at haters and blocking people left and right and just be like, I'm not gonna do that shit. I don't have time for that shit. And they never miss a beat and they know they're still good people. And I know that they're good people and I watch the good things that they do and I know where their heart is. It's almost like having a strong sense of self and loving yourself and setting boundaries has nothing to do with whether you are a good or bad person or not. If your empathy is intact and if your care and your concern is intact and then going a step further and saying, how do you know that? How do you show it? And if it passes my filter, that's gotta be good enough. And that also means if I have to be firm about a boundary or a line that I have to draw and those lines have to get increasingly more difficult, that doesn't change who this is. I had to then go on to the psychedelic science conference in Denver and I had to teach and do a book signing and in, instead of being overwhelmed like I usually am, especially after a trip, <laughs> I was completely fine. I got to meet a lot of people, followers, uh, amazing people that I look up to. <laughs> I watched a lot of negative things being said and done about this mushroom. I dealt with a couple of people that did not like my work. And through all of it, I felt very resilient, calm, present, capable, and grounded. And my integration period for the last three weeks has been continuing to go, oh, I'm a shitty person. I shouldn't have set that boundary. I should. And then this alternate reality, the mushroom voice comes in and, and it's a very deep voice. And it says, remember what we showed you. And then I get to relive parts of the trip and the truth in it. And then my heart is aligned again and I am settled and I feel calm and I feel present and I can breathe. I know that my telling of this doesn't sound awful, 
like some nightmare, haunted, seeing awful faces thing. Not like my last high dose psilocybin trip, but when I tell you the shame, and it was so relieving to remember you were tripping, girl. <laughs> you were tripping, it didn't happen. I want you to know that's Stormy Lou, and there's Freya. Don't be afraid of these experiences. They are just as profoundly healing as the psilocybin. Make sure you have someone with you before you engage in any high macro dose or high dose. And do not even begin working with Pantherina until you have smoked it, microdosed it, and then 50 50 it with some muscaria pantherina low dose this is how i've been working with pantherina i was fully prepared for what i did and i had help i'm sure there's a lot i'm leaving out because i'm still processing it's only been three weeks i feel solid but also interestingly enough even more empathetic more compassionate because instead of doing battle and being in resistance to what is or requests or people or time or fear or energy, I have peace. And now that I have peace, my heart's opening wide up and I just sit in empathy and compassion. It's amazing how much love you can hold for other people, how much community you can feel our community, which you can join for 20 bucks a month. And we have Zooms every week, sometimes two or three of them a week. You can jump in. I love you, beautiful people. <laughs> From Stormy Lou, Freya, and Emily Dreamer, and Summer in Hot Appalachia. I'm gonna go inside now. <laughs>